Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back class to our course, uh, Mechanical Behavior of Materials. So we have already uh, discussed about uh, the strengthening mechanisms and uh, Professor Sushan Sethar has also discussed with you uh, about tensile testing. Okay, so today what we are going to do, we are going to talk about other mechanical tests like uh, hardness testing and impact testing, etc. Okay, so we'll start with the hardness testing and then we'll talk about impact testing. So let's talk about hardness testing. Okay, so uh, what is, first of all, well, you know, what is uh, the hardness testing and why uh, it is being used? We'll discuss about that, but uh, let me begin with uh, saying that, uh, you know, in material science community and metallurgical community, people uh, use a lot uh, this hardness testing. It's uh, one, of, one of the most versatile uh, techniques uh, when you talk about measurement of mechanical properties and uh, it is uh, mainly measured on the surface okay so let's talk about in details about hardness testing so what uh, what is hardness so it's uh, it's a measure of a materials response or resistance to localized plaster deformation. You already know what is plaster deformation, right? So, okay, or say permanent deformation. And basically we do everything on the surface. Okay, so hardness is typically measured on the surface. So it's a materials response or the resistance materials is going to give when you try to uh, deform plastically the surface of a given material. Okay, and that is how hardness is measured. So there are three types of hardness we are going to discuss today. First one is stretch hardness. Then we have rebound hardness. And then lastly, indentation hardness, which is one of the famous, uh, famous one, okay, most uh, famous one among these three, indentation hardness. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, uh, let me give you some introduction about hardness before we talk about all these hardness, three different type, uh, type of hardness. So introduction, two to three points about, you know, hardness. So the first is that, uh, you see, typically hardness uh, is, is being used frequently by material scientists and metallurgical scientists because of the, some of the reasons. The first is that it is simple. 
and inexpensive. Not, uh, I should not say inexpensive, relatively inexpensive. Okay, so it's relative term. Okay, so if you compare to your tensile testing, what Professor Sasan Shekhar discussed, right, you have to prepare a sample, right, you have to use EDM, etc., then polish it, then use a stensometer, etc. So that is cumbersome. Although it is a very good technique, it is slightly cumbersome. So uh, uh, in that sense, hardness becomes much simpler technique to measure mechanical properties. And second, the equipment what we use for hardness measurement is not that expensive. Okay, so it is a relative term. Relatively, it is slightly inexpensive. So that is point number one. Second, the test is non-destructive. Okay, so now again compare with your tensile test, there you are going to fracture the sample, right? Here in hardness test, we are making indentation or say we are doing stretch on the surface of the sample. So you are actually not destroying the sample itself. Okay, you are actually giving a localized deformation on the surface of the sample. So this test becomes non-destructive in nature. So you're not actually fracturing or giving excessively deformation to the sample. So uh, the second, this is the second point. And third is, you know, it can give you an indication of the strength. That means, you know, if, if hardness is high, you know, you can say that your yeah, strength is also going to be high. So it gives you an indication of the strength of the given material, although you cannot directly calculate the value of the strength, but it gives you qualitatively what could be the strength in the relative sense, higher or lower. Okay. So these are the three points, uh, you know, why researchers use hardness a lot, okay, to measure uh, mechanical property that to hardness. Okay. Again, remember it's a surface property rather than the bulk property. Tensile test is your bulk measurement. So now let's, uh, Talk about the history, how it has progressed over time. So historical perspective. Okay. So the first uh, uh, hardness measurement, let me change the color one second. Yeah. So it started in uh, 1722 here. Okay, so uh, where uh, it is related to the scratching the surfaces. Okay, and then in 1822, the development of Mohs scale um, uh, happened. Okay, and we are going to talk about this Mohs scale in 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 in, in couple of minutes. Okay, so there you will see that uh, there is a table uh, of uh, a 10 point stretch hardness table and depending upon the hard, uh, scratching ability you, uh, you can guess what kind of mineral is present okay now after that uh, john brinell developed brinell hardness in uh, 1900 okay and then uh, rebound hardness is around 1907 then uh, Rockwell hardness came into picture at around 1920, okay, where we are going to talk about preload method. So this Brinell, Rockwell, Weaker, and Noob, all these are indentation hardness, okay. Mohs scale is related to scratch hardness, and in 1917, you have this rebound hardness, okay. And then around 1925, Weaker's uh, hardness testing uh, what method was developed okay and it became very famous now we are talking about uh, instrumented uh, hardness like nano indentation even in weaker's uh, micro uh, hardness you can measure uh, using it in, in, uh, iit in, in, instrumentation indentation technique okay 
but we will focus on mostly scratch in the hardness and then uh, rebound hardness, then Brinell, Rothwell, and Wheaters hardness. Okay, so this is how my I'm going to talk about the progress of the talk. Okay, so let's start with the scratch hardness. Okay, so the name itself suggests, right? Scratching, say scratch hardness. So you are somehow scratching it, scratching the material and based on that, you're trying to uh, understand what could be the hardness of a given material, okay? So here, it's a Mohs scale. Okay. And this is typically for mineral. So this is the table here. So we have Mohs hardness varying from one to 10 in increasing order like this, okay? And uh, different minerals uh, have been listed here. So one corresponds to say tar, then four corresponds to fluorite, and then 10 corresponds to diamond. And we know diamond is the hardest one, right? So 10 belongs to the diamond. And the softest in this list is tar, and I've also given you the chemical formula. Okay, so uh, it shows, this table shows uh, what? It shows scratch hardness of various materials or minerals. Okay, so it also tells you the ability of a harder material, a mineral to scratch a softer mineral. Okay, so what does it mean? Suppose I take fluoride and try to scratch tart, right? So fluoride can scratch tart very easily. Okay, and if I can see it, I know that fluorite is harder than tart. Okay, and if I do the opposite, if I take tart and then scratch fluorite, it is not going to scratch fluorite. So we know that tart is softer than fluorite. And that is what I wrote here, right? This table nicely tells you the which one is harder min mineral and which one is the softer material. So it gives you a scratch hardness of various material. That is point number one. Now second, you know, uh, it is this uh, table can give you, a it is a convenient way to help identify minerals, okay? So suppose you are going for a field trip, okay? And you found some minerals and you want to know, you know which mineral is that, you want to guess it, okay? So you can use this table to guess, slightly guess, you know, which type of mineral it can be, okay? So it is a convenient way to help identify minerals. Okay, so suppose uh, uh, again, you went to a field trip and then, uh, you know, the, what is the scratch hardness of your uh, fingernail? It's around 2.5. So if you uh, use your fingernail, It will be nearly say around 2.5. Okay, and if you take say steel nail, it will be around 6.5. Okay, so you are going to a field trip and you found some mineral. And if you are able to, you know, scratch the mineral using your fingernail, you know that the hardness, stretch hardness or Mohs hardness of that particular mineral is lower than 2.5, okay? So, and similarly, if you are able to scratch a particular mineral, um, say using steel nail, but not using fingernail, 
you you can you you should be able to know that the mohs hardness uh, lies between 2.5 to 6.5 okay so basically you can use some common objects for which you have, you know the hardness okay and then you can figure out what could be the mohs hardness of a unknown mineral okay so this is very uh, important for mineralogists okay they use this type of uh, hardness a lot so this is one type of hardness which is uh, mohs hardness okay or scratch hardness now we'll talk about rebound hardness okay now again the name itself says this rebound hardness so what we are going to do we are going to use the concept of rebounding okay so it's like you know you are ha having a, say ball right tennis ball and then you throw on the wall and then rebounds right so it is going to come back and then you can measure how much distance it has covered while coming back okay so that the same concept you are going to use when you talk about rebound hardness so if you see here i have a schematic so this is how you measure the rebound hardness you have a hammer which is typically of say diamond rounded tip uh, okay and uh, uh, it's a glass tube here okay and then you have a scale here so this hammer this hammer is going to be released something like this so this is situation number 2 okay and it is going to hit the sample so your sample is at the bottom here okay so your hammer comes down it hits the sample and then rebounds back okay so it travels this much height okay now you have to measure what is the rebound hardness and there are machines you don't need to do anything this is the concept how it works how what is the principle of measurement of rebound hardness okay so it uh, measures the rebound height okay based on the scale and then it gives you a value okay and that value will be called as rebound hardness okay so the higher the rebound hardness higher is going to be the hardness of your given material okay so the harder the material the higher the rebound okay suppose i have two material a and then another one is b so two material okay and i am doing rebound test so in one of them after rebound my hammer was here so this is my rebound height for say a and then in another one this is the rebound height for b hb okay so here hb is greater than ha this means capital hb is greater than capital a where this capital h is your hardness or rebound hardness okay and the small h is your rebound height okay so this is how we measure the rebound hardness so higher the rebound height higher is your hardness of your uh, material or alloy okay so the one of the you know advantage of this type of hardness is that the machine what you use is portable and it is very easy to handle so that is one of the advantages so it's portable and easy to handle okay so this was about 
rebound hardness. So we have covered scratch hardness, that is the Mohs scale, and then the rebound hardness. So now we will come to the third one, the most famous one, as a material scientist or metallurgical engineer, engineers, we use indentation hardness. Okay, and you might have heard already about Brinell testing and uh, Beaker's testing and Rockwell testing. So we'll uh, talk about them one by one. Okay, so what is the central concept when we talk about indentation hardness? So let us understand it. So again, say we have uh, two alloy. This is A and the second one is B. Okay, so two material. And say my indenter is of ball type and we are indenting both of them. And I am applying a load of P, constant load on both of them. Okay, so we have two different alloys. And then uh, we are using ball indenter. Okay, so this is your indenter here. Ball indenter. So see, indentation hardness means you have to indent it. It's like, you know, you have uh, this nail and you're trying to pierce it, right? So you're making indent on the surface. So we have different type of standards for that, like Brinell hardness, Wheaters hardness, and Rockwell hardness. Okay, so basically you have to indent the surface. Okay. So, uh, you are applying a load P, so it is going to go to some depth. Okay. So, suppose in alloy A, it went up to a depth of, say, T1. And in alloy B, it went up to a depth of T2. Okay. So, now we know that T2 is greater than T1. Okay. So by logic, one can always say that B is softer than A, right? Because it has gone to a higher depth when we are indenting the surface, okay? So if it has gone to the higher depth, B is going to be softer, right? So indent, indentation, what we do, we see the up top view of it. So if I try to see the top view of uh, say alloy A, I'm going to see a circle, and if I try to see the uh, top view of alloy B after indentation, I am also going to see the circle, but it will be of larger diameter. Okay, so if this diameter here is D1 and it is here D2, so we can write D2 greater than D1. Okay, see again, remember it's a ball indenter. So when you are trying to indent it, you are going to get, but if you see the top view, you are going to see a circle. Okay, and since T2 is greater than T1, you are going to see a larger circle in alloy B. Okay, so if we have T2 greater than T1, so D2 greater than D1, where D is your diameter of indent impression. So this is your indent impression, both of that, these two, right? And T is your the depth of indentation or indentation depth. Okay. So finally, you can write H1 greater than H2. Okay. So this is a central concept of indentation hardness that we try to see the impression. Right? What is the impression of the indent uh, you have made? Okay, But in Rockwell, we don't see the impression. We measure the depth of the indentation. So in Rockwell, we will use the concept of say T2 greater than T1. And in other Brinell and uh, Wheaters, we see the indent impression and then measure the diagonal length or say diameter of the circle uh, indent uh, uh, circle, which is the indent impression, and then finally we measure the hardness. Okay, so this is the central concept of indentation hardness. So, in general, 
the hardness we can write as load by indentation area okay and this is what we are going to use when we talk about prinels and weaker hardness so there are three types of indentation hardness uh, which we are going to discuss in the class so the first one is brinel hardness second is weakers and the last one is rockwell okay so we are going to discuss these three brinel weakers and rockwell so let's start with brinel first brinel hardness testing okay so here we typically use 10 mm diameter steel ball okay so the indenter in this case in the brinel testing is steel ball of 10 mm diameter okay and typically the load what we apply is 3000 kgf okay kilogram force kgf is kilogram force okay but for softer material the load can be reduced okay but this is the standard 10 mm diameter steel balls and 3000 kgf okay in some of the cases if your material is hard you can also use tungsten carbide Okay, so tungsten carbide you can also use uh, for harder material, and this is the setup. So this is the Brinell hardness tester we have in our lab here at IIT Kanpur. Okay, so we show this uh, test to all UG students in our department. So you place your sample here. Okay, so you have uh, anvil. Okay, and then indenter is here. on the top so here okay so you can see this is your indenter so you place your sample okay and then you make an indented indent indentation then take out the sample go to microscope and see the indent impression as i discussed just before okay so this hardness measurement in this case can be given as say bhn which is brinel hardness number and it will be given as 2p divided by pi d d minus square root d square minus small d square okay where p is your load and it is in kgf d is your indenter diameter so here ball diameter which is typically we use 10 mm okay and then small d is your diameter of indent impression okay so since we are using ball indenter of 10 mm right so suppose i have a alloy or material and we are using ball indenter here right
something like this. Okay, so this is your ball indented, and this is your sample. The ball indented is placed on the the this place here, right? See the diagram I am marking here. Okay, so now if this is the side view. And if you see the top view of it, you can see the indent impression. Now, if I see the top view and it is going to be something like this, okay, it is going to make a circle. Okay, so what we do, we measure D1. And then along the other direction, perpendicular direction, we measure D2. Okay, so we measure two di uh, di uh, diameters, D1 and D2. So here D1, D2 are diameters. Okay, so diameter of the indent impression when you see from the top. And you take the average. So this will be average of D1, D2. So this D, if you remember, is here, right? So this will be D1 plus D2 by 2, okay? So you know P because you are doing the test. You know the ball diameter that is also given to you. So what you have to do, you have to use this indenter, this indenter, then take out the sample after indentation is done. And then go to microscope, see the top view, you are going to see a circle, okay? And then measure the dimension, diagonal uh, diameter along two perpendicular directions. Those will be D1, D2, take the average of those two and that will be D, small d. And then you can use this formula, BHN equal to 2P by pi D and uh, you know d minus under square root of d square minus d square and then you can figure out what is the hardness in brinell scale okay which will be given in bhn so here i am showing you one example which is for uh, uh, mild steel okay so uh, uh, load is 200 kgf okay 250 kg. Sorry. Okay. So what you have to do, as I just mentioned, you have to measure two dimension. So you can measure, say, D1 along this direction, and then D2 along this direction. And if you do that, roughly D1 will come out to be 1089 micron meter. D2 will come out to be 1080. These are rough numbers, okay? Micron meter. Okay. So D average you can calculate. That you can calculate. You know what is P that is given to you. That is 250 kgf. So you can calculate the BHN number. Okay. From this formula. I think this uh, D and small d will be in millimeter. Let me write. So both will be in millimeter. And P will be in kg. Okay. So this is how you calculate the Brinell hardness number. Okay. So especially when you use steel ball, the Brinell hardness number is not going to be accurate when your material is very, very hard. Right? Because see, you are using a steel ball, there is a chance that your steel ball is itself deforming. Okay, So if you are at, uh, your material is hard, it is better to use weakers, which I'm going to talk about. There we use diamond in dental. Okay, and diamond itself is very, very hard. Okay, so your Brinell hardness is not reliable at very high hardness values. So that means uh, a, a harder material. Okay, that is point number one. In all the hardness states, whether it is Brinell, Weakers, or Rockwell, your surface has to be 
smooth and uh, you have to polish okay so basically when you want to do any hardness test you first polish your sample using conventional metal metallography technique and then use either of these three indentation uh, methods depending upon uh, your material and then you can calculate what is the hardness value okay second it is not very suitable for thin samples because of larger indenter impression okay so the first disadvantage is that uh, not reliable at high hardness value okay say greater than 400 or so okay. and the reason is because uh, your steel uh, ball itself will start deforming okay. that is point number 1 and second point is not very suitable for thin samples thin film etc or you know where your sample thickness is uh, not that high due to larger indenter impression okay so this is what uh, uh, brinell hardness is all about so now let's talk about uh, wickers hardness measurement so here what we are going to do we will use the indenter is going to be diamond pyramidal okay so this is going to be your indenter so we are using diamond instead of steel ball when we talk about wickers hardness test okay and this is the indenter shape so this is your uh, indenter here wickers indenter okay and if you see this uh, so first of all you can see here right your base is square shape okay and if you take this particular surface and this particular surface the angle between these two it's fixed and that is 136 degree okay so the angle in the diamond pyramidal indenter used in wicker test the angle between the two opposite face is going to be 136 degree okay again the indenter is made up of diamond and if you indent it your indenter shape indent impression shape is going to be something like this okay at the bottom so what you do here suppose you have a material and you are indenting it using your diamond pyramidal indenter and if you see the cross section now it is going to be something like this okay so this is your say, side view and this is your top view so finally you are going to get an indent impression which will be this from top view okay so you polish the sample and then go to your uh, in, uh, indenter i will show you the uh, image of the indenter we are we a machine we use uh, here in our lab okay and then indent it and then you measure what is this two diagonal length d1 and d2 
okay and then you can take average that will be d1 plus d2 by 2 okay so there in the brinell hardness testing we were measuring diameter of the indent impression here we are measuring the diagonal length of uh, the indent impression so you measure d1 and d2 okay so i have a scene set up Okay. Okay. So anyway, so machine setup is uh, the it looks similar. Okay. Only thing is your diamond indenter is different. Second, you are going to have a microscope attached to it. So now there are different uh, microscope. Why? Because you want to see the sample surface before you make an indentation. Okay. So you take the sample, place on the anvil, then use the microscope attached to the machine, then see the surface where you want to indent. Then bring the indenter on the surface and start your test. Okay. And then remove the indenter. Now there are two ways you can measure this D1 and D2. You can use the same indenter, uh, same microscope attached to the machine, and then there you can measure D1 and D2. Or you nowadays, you know, we have sophisticated machines and attached equipment. So there are cameras attached to your machine. And then camera can capture your image and then you have a computer attached to it where you can nicely measure what is your D1 and D2. And finally, you can find out the average, which will be your final diagonal length when you calculate the hardness. Okay. And the hardness can be given in the Vickers hardness test is, so we use HV when we call Vickers hardness. Okay, and it will be given again, the formula remains same, P versus area, okay? So here area is your pyramidal indentation area, right? So that will be given as 1.854 P by D square. So this is for your Vickers indentation, where P is your load, Again in KGF, kilogram force, and D is your average diagonal length. This is in millimeter. Okay, so this is how we measure Vickers hardness test. I have an example here. So this is for aluminum. Uh, it's for aluminum alloy, say 7075. And then we are using 500 GF load. So your load is given, P is given as 500 GF. And this is your indent impression. I was talking about before, right? So what you have to do, you have to measure two diagonal here. So one is going to be this one. And another is going to be these two. So you have to measure D1 and D2, and then find out what is the average of D1 and D2. Okay, so here, if you try to solve, it is going to be, D1 is going to be nearly say 75 micron meter. And D2 is going to be nearly about 74 micron meter. So you can calculate what is going to be D. Okay. You know what is P, you can calculate what is your HV. Okay. And if you do that, it will come out to be in this particular case, the hardness will be 167 nearly. Okay. So this is how. We use Vickers hardness test to measure the hardness of the given material. Okay. So, what is the advantage? So, one of the advantages I already told, right? That uh, when you use brittle, you cannot go for very hard material because your steel uh, ball can itself uh, uh, deform. Okay. So, if you have harder material, it's better to go for Vickers diamond indenter. Okay, so that is the advantage when we use Vickers hardness test as compared to the Brinell hardness test. Okay. So now last one uh, is your Rockwell testing. 
okay so now we will discuss about rock fuel test so this is the setup we have in our lab here okay. so you place again your sample then you have indenter on the top and then you make an indent on the sample okay so here instead of using microscope etc to see the indent impression right it automatically gives you the value of the rockwell hardness okay so here if you see the scale on the top in this particular image okay that i have magnified and you can see scale c here and b here we will discuss what is b and c but most famous right b and c scales in rockwell hardness okay so you can use this scale and this dial will give you the value of your uh, hardness value okay of the material you are testing so instead of measuring the d1 d2 uh, you know diagonal of the uh, diagonal length or the diameter of your indent impression in brinell test what we did here it will automatically give you the hardness value in the dial okay so the indenter here we are going to use uh, uh, either we can use uh, ball or we can use cono spherical or say diamond cone we also say so that is something like this Okay. and this angle this particular angle is 120 degrees okay so this is diamond cone okay so how do we do this test now so basically we apply first of all something called minor load as i have shown here okay so this is the schematic how your indenter is moving on the sample and this is another schematic corresponding to the top image okay and let me explain this so what we do we first apply a minor load on the sample Okay, one of the advantage is that if you have some rough surface, etc., you know you are going to get rid of that effect. So you apply minor load of F zero, and that corresponds to this particular point here. So this is your sample surface, this line. Okay, so you are applying a minor load, so you attain some depth. Okay, this particular depth here. now what you do you now apply major load on to the minor load so you have minor load of f not and then major load of f1 and total load of f okay which is equal to f not plus f so you are going to reach to some distance here so this corresponds to a depth at a load of f which is equal to f not plus f1 okay so this is my total depth here at this particular point from the surface okay now what you do you remove the additional test force of f1 so you are removing the major load so you are removing here so your indentation direction is shown uh, by dotted arrow okay so this is how your indentation direction is going to be with respect to time Okay. so after you remove the additional test force f1 your depth position is going to be this one c so the here you have c and here also you have c okay so you all now you have only uh, minor load of f0 applied on your sample so what you do you measure this distance e and this you use to measure the hardness of your material in rockwell scale okay so if we use cone indenter the rockwell
Arnit will be given as 100 minus E divided by 0 0.002. Okay. And if we are using ball indenter, the Rockwell hardness will be one thirty minus E by zero point zero zero two. Okay. So depending upon whether your indenter is diamond cone or ball, right? You are going to use two different formula like this. So, and that will be depending upon this value of E. Okay. And again, the Rockwell uh, indenter gives you automatically the values. Okay. So here I'm showing you a table. So this is for regular Rockwell. Okay. So this is your Rockwell scale overall. And this is for super special. Okay, so in uh, there are two types of uh, Rockwell scale. One is regular Rockwell scale, another one is superficial Rockwell scale. So in regular uh, Rockwell scale, you are going to see the your load value is high. Okay, so here I have mentioned in this column the type of indenter, and this is the scale. And as I mentioned before, B and C are the most famous one. So when we use B scale, if you see, if you remember the dial. I showed you before, right? So there we had B, B scale and C scale. So if you use B scale, the indenter uh, is going to be one by 16 inch steel ball. Okay, and if you use C scale, it is going to be diamond cone with 20 uh, 120 degree angle, okay? And in all the cases, you are going to have a minor load, which is F0 of 10 kgf here, right? This F0 value, okay? Then we also applied major load onto the minor load. That will vary depending upon the scale, right? So for A scale, it is 50, for B 90 and C 140. And then total load is the summation of minor load and major load, which is given like this, okay? So you have different scales uh, in the regular Rockwell uh, measurement, okay? So depending upon the material, you would like to go for different scales, but again, the most famous are B and C, okay? Now, superficial came into picture, especially when you want to uh, do the hardness testing of, say, electroplated materials, thin film, etc. So here, the requirement is that you don't want to go to very high depth, right? So you need to reduce the load. So if you see here, in the regular one, it was of very high load, starting from 60 kgf, goes up to 150 kgf. Here in superficial, it starts at 15 and stops at 45 kgf, okay? And the scale name is given as a 15 and 30 and 40 and, and that indenter will be diamond cone. And then when we have T, then it will be steel ball, okay? And minor load is also reduced. Total load is reduced. So minor load is also reduced from 10 to three when we have superficial scale. Okay, so the, I have listed only some of them. You have uh, uh, many more in the scale of say W, S and Y when we talk about superficial uh, Rockwell scale. Okay, so this is what I wanted to discuss about uh, uh, hardness testing, especially uh, the indentation on Rockwell, Wheaters and Brinnell. So let me summarize the three scales. So we have Test, I'm going to list test here. Then what is the indenter? This will help you in, you know, uh, I, since I'm going to make a table, this will help you in understanding or, you know, capturing what type of indenter you use in which type of test. Then here we are going to have shape of indentation. Side view, top view. Okay. 
So the first is your brainal. And what do we use uh, indented in brinal? Either steel ball or tungsten carbide ball, right? And both are say 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter steel or tungsten carbide ball. And if you see the side view of it, it is going to be spherical. Right? It's a ball, so it is going to be spherical. And if you see the top view, it is going to be circle. And here we will measure D1 and D2. So average is D. And here your ball diameter is your capital D. Okay. So this is one. Second is your vickers. Here we are using diamond pyramid. Okay. And that was 136 degree angle, if you remember. So this particular angle here is. 136 degrees. So this is your side view. Okay. So the opposite face, the angle between the opposite two opposite faces is going to be 136 degrees. And if you see the uh, top view, going to be square. And then you have to measure D1 and D2. So D is going to be D1 plus D2 by 2. Now the last is your Rockwell. So here we will use diamond cone. 120 degree angle. Okay. If you remember. Or we can also use uh, steel balls. And the size of the steel balls or the spheres are 1 by 16, 1 by 8, 1 by 4, 1 by 2 inches. Okay. And if you use diamond cone, it will be, so this is the side view, right? And this angle was 120, right? And if you see the top view, it's a diamond cone. So it is going to form a circle. And now if we have a steel sphere, it is also going to form a circle. Okay. Here we have two scales, uh, rock, uh, superficial and regular, right? So 60 kg, then 100, then 150, this was regular. And then we had 15, 30, 45, this was superficial. Okay. So we have discussed about Rockwell, Vickers, uh, Brinell hardness test, that is uh, your indentation hardness. We have also discussed about uh, scratch hardness and rebound hardness. Okay. Thank you.